As I'm sure most of you are already aware, Lies of P has three main stats that correlate directly to your damage output with particular weapons in the game. Those three stats, of course, being motivity, technique, and advance. Well, today we're going to be looking at each and every one of those stats as I'm going to show you the best build that you can make around each one. I will also show you sort of the early game and late game versions of each build. So whether you've just started playing the game or you're struggling with a late game boss, this video will cover a build that's perfect for you. But that's enough said, let's jump straight into things. Now, I'm going to kick things off with the motivity build. One, because it's my favorite out of the whole bunch as it does the most pure damage in the entire game. And two, there are just a whole bunch of early game weapons that you can pick up that utilize motivity. Other than the beginning greatsword just being a great choice anyway, by the end of chapter three, you should have picked up the Krat police baton and also the big pipe wrench. Combining the head of the pipe wrench and the handle of the police baton you will now have access to possibly the greatest damage dealing weapon in the entire game. Up until the recent update that happened last week, this was still the weapon that I was using and relying upon to get me through the various new game pluses that I was in. And that is mainly down to the pure beauty that is the two Fable Arts when you combine these two items. With the Handles Fable Arts, that will charge up your next attack to do significantly more damage. And then if your next attack happens to be a fully charged patient smash with the wrench itself, you will then be doing upwards of say six, seven, eight thousand damage. Of course, with a fully upgraded weapon, but even at the very beginning, you're going to be doing two, three thousand plus. That is almost enough damage to take on any mini boss that you see in the near vicinity, and just the base damage itself with the heavy attacks is more than enough to one shot any other minion that's in your way. The only downside to this, of course, is its range because it is very very short in terms of a weapon handle but that's why as you're progressing through the game you can also eventually get your hands on Molnir. and I'll be completely honest I wouldn't combine Molnir with anything else because again Molnir's head is one of the best base damage weapons in the entire game so if you keep the handle that comes with it you've got a long reaching sledgehammer that also has the power of the gods to infuse it with lightning when using the thunderstrike fable this is available in chapter 8 and i'll be completely honest the previous combination of the crap baton and the big pipe wrench is more than enough to carry you through until this point i know the range isn't the greatest but with smaller weapons now getting a buff in terms of how much guard regain you get when blocking certain attacks, it's more than viable now to get up close and personal, simply block attacks hit them to get your health back, rinse and repeat, and deal tens of thousands of damage in very quick succession. And then like I say, when you get to chapter 8 and pick up Molnir, you can then just utilize that for the rest of the run. Of course, throughout the game, there's only going to be four stats you're going to want to focus on. Of course, motivity, but also vitality, vigor, and also capacity. Now, I wish I could show you a screenshot of what I would like you to have, but my character is in New Game Plus 4, and um... Yeah, it's a bit overkill. So what I would advise is maybe just jumping into about 20, 25 vitality as sort of like your mainstay throughout your first playthrough. Definitely no more than 10 in vigor because endurance in this game or stamina regen in this game is actually quite helpful and quite forgiving. So you're more than likely going to be able to charge up your stamina bar whilst you're doing certain attacks. So Vigor for me personally never really seemed to be an issue, but then realistically you just need about 20, 25 capacity or so to ensure that you're not overweight or considered heavy for your equipment load. And then again about 30 odd points in motivity and you'll be doing more than enough damage to fly through the rest of the game. And again, as you're progressing through the game, if you get a motivity crank or if you want to buy one from Vanini's shop, you can also do that to boost the damage output with these particular weapons. As for the Legion arm, I would definitely recommend that you use the four minus or the four minis. However, in which way that you pronounce the electric blitz Legion arm that you can get. I know it's not the best in terms of scaling with motivity, but in terms of the combat benefits and just the damage output with it, 4 minus is the best that you can run with motivity. Throw in the fact that it's electric blitz, you will then be doing even more damage to the enemies that you do affect with electric blitz, just again adding to the already catastrophic damage you were doing. Of course, just make sure that you're running the absolute best defense parts that you can use whilst you're progressing through your playthrough, that's just box standard. In terms of the amulets, 
one thing that I always make sure that I'm running is the carrier's amulet just to again ensure that I am in a medium or light load to stop me being overcumbered and being slow and also having really slow stamina regeneration during our fights but I would also highly recommend using the second boss's soul so the watchman's soul to get the extreme modification amulet because essentially what that does is that increases the amount of damage you do based on the amount of fable slots that you have charged up so if you're coming up against enemies that you don't need to use your fable arts against you will also be doing extra damage whilst you've got it fully charged up and then if you've only got the three amulet slots i would also then urge you to have one of the three amulets that helps deal damage against certain enemies so either the puppet destroyer's amulet murderer puppet's amulet or the car Marcus Butcher's amulet. So again, all three of those amulets will boost your damage against certain enemy types and of course each one correlates to each enemy type in the game. So if you're going through an area filled with puppets, obviously have the Puppet Destroyer's amulet. If you're going through an area of loads of carcasses, use the Carcass Butcher and so on and so on. But as for P organs, I'll discuss that at the end of the video because you really use the same ones pretty much for each build. So with that in mind, let's jump into the technique build now. Now, for the technique build, it's going to be very similar to Motivity in terms of being set up by Chapter 3, because the weapon that we're going to be utilizing is in fact the Booster Glaive. You get this inside of Vanini Works, and it's more than capable of carrying you through pretty much the majority of the game. I wouldn't advise putting on any other heads, I would just use the Booster Glaive itself until you can get the Bone Saw Head, which is unfortunately further on in Chapter 5, because once you do have the ability to put the bone saw head on it we will then have a healthy mix of the handle from the booster glaive and then one of the longest blades in the entire game making your reach outright ridiculous because whenever you do a charge heavy with this thing you will boost forward with the booster glaive and then be swinging like i say one of the longest weapons in the entire game you can obviously use this to your advantage to dodge out of the way of certain attacks and then jump straight back into the action almost making the possibility of a hitless run the easiest thing known to man also another benefit of having the bone saw blade on this weapon is having the link chop fable art which if you use it the one time using two fable bars you do the quicker slash again doing quite a substantial amount of damage but if you follow up with a second press of the button you will then do a charged version of that fable art dealing even more damage ultimately staggering your enemies every time. The Fable Arts of the Booster Glaive's handle is very similar but you charge it up because it's patient slash, ultimately doing the same thing as the second phase of the Link Chop. But once you've had enough of essentially beating your enemies to a pulp with possibly one of the best technique damage output weapons in the game, you can then move on to possibly the best boss weapon to ever exist in any Souls-like game. And of course, I'm talking about the two Dragon Sword. The weapon that you get by trading the King Puppet Soul at the end of Chapter 6, this thing is not only one of the best looking swords in the game, but when used correctly, literally makes you untouchable. That is because with the Charged Heavy, you will do a sequence of slashes in midair, but at the end of it will be a small window where you will parry any attack in the entire game and yes that includes bosses so if you are good enough and patient enough and know the timings well enough to be able to hit that window as soon as anyone attacks you you will be able to parry every single attack and follow up with a poise breaking move essentially stunning every enemy that stands in your way without being touched yourself. It is possibly the most broken thing in the entire game and I'm surprised I haven't actually made a video on it, but that's why it's featured here. And if for whatever reason you get bored of doing that, it's also got some powerful fable arts, one of which is similar to say Moonveil, if you've ever played Elden Ring and know the Moonveil attacks, where it does a dash of magic damage in front of you, dealing damage to those enemies that are in that near vicinity. And that's the Handles fable arts, the Wind of Swords, but if you want to use the main blades fable art, the link emergency dodge, that will push you forward, essentially dodging any attack. And then you can press the fable art button two more times to unleash a whirlwind of slashes, again, potentially breaking your enemy's poise. Making this particular video has made me realize just how potent 
technique builds can be, especially when you think of things like the Proof of Humanity don't even make it into this kind of build, but realistically the Booster Glaive and the two Dragon Swords are the only two weapons that you need. And then of course, like I mentioned with the Motivity build in terms of the stats, all you need to do is rather than having 30 plus stats in motivity is have the same layout but 30 plus stats in technique and uh, yeah you'll be pretty much good to go. The Legion arm that I would use with this particular build is in fact the best scaling one with technique being the puppet string. It's actually probably one of my favourite Legion arms in the entire game especially when you level it up to its fullest and you do the plunging attack after launching yourself towards the enemies because that does again a substantial amount of damage and can break your enemy's poises or at least stagger them allowing you then to follow up with whichever heavy attack you have so puppet string is definitely a must for this type of build and as for the amulets again they're going to be relatively the same depending on your carrying capacity i would heavily suggest having carrier's amulet still on definitely keep the extreme modification amulet but if you've progressed long enough or at least through to the next chapter after getting the two dragon sword i would also highly recommend getting the arm of god amulet because that does temporarily increase the amount of damage you do after successive attacks and there's four tiers to that so essentially you can get a nice hefty damage boost just by simply engaging in your targets and where this is going to be a much quicker weapon compared to the motivity weapons you will obviously be utilizing the benefit from this particular amulet a lot more than you would if you were using it with the motivity build otherwise if you haven't quite completed chapter 7 yet to get that particular amulet again i would just heavily advise using the specific amulets for specific enemies so the puppet destroyers amulet the carcass destroyer amulet and then the murderer puppets amulet if you've got those because that will again just increase the amount of damage inflicted to the corresponding enemies but of course with all that said let's jump into the final build around advance now i must say this purely also depends on what type of element you want to be using and i know that sounds a bit of a cop out but the reason why i say that is because you can have a very overpowered advanced build as early as chapter two and that's mainly because you'll have access to purchase the electric coil weapon from one of the stranded merchants in which case you can then just purely focus on advance and electric blitz damage but if you're someone like me and you're a bit more sadistic and you want to see the world burn to flames you can also use a combination of the acidic crystal spear along with the salamander dagger blade the reason why i particularly think this is a great combination is because you're using a dagger on the end of a spear so you're increasing the range tenfold going from a dagger to a spear but still also keeping a relatively quick dps if anything sometimes it feels like it's quicker the brilliant thing about the salamander the dagger blade is that it has the ignite fable art so if you are coming up against enemies that are susceptible to fire they will literally be ignited in one or two hits but even those that aren't will still go up in flames after two or three and for a relatively early game advanced build this weapon is incredibly useful much like with the amulets we were discussing a moment ago switching out particular amulets for different types of enemies you may find it useful to also switch the blade on this depending on who you're coming up against so if you know you're going into a load of carcass fights then obviously keep the flame on there but if you're coming up against puppets maybe swap out to the electric coil or even put the acidic spear back on the handle to use the acidic damage but either way the reason why i want you to use this handle is purely down to the single stab ability that it has the single stab fable art on the handle is a very potent stab attack that can do thousands of damage against the enemy and especially in your first playthrough is going to do a lot of poise damage so where advanced weapons aren't particularly particularly known for doing a lot of base damage and they're mainly there for the status effects to do all of the damage for them this single stab is the backup for that to do a heavy blow pretty much every now and again once you've stacked up three fable arts it definitely is good enough to carry you through the majority of the game but then as soon as you hit around about chapter seven or eight i would heavily suggest using the circular electric chainsaw handle mixed with the black steel cutter blade because that is essentially one beefy upgrade on the weapon that you already had the other benefit of upgrading to this particular weapon is you will now have access to a heavier move set meaning that you can actually do quite a substantial amount of base damage as well as keeping the elemental effect with the black steel cutter because again that will work just like the salamander sword setting people alight in one or two hits unfortunately the game doesn't have 
have any boss weapons or any special weapons that utilize advance as its main stat so this will be your sort of like end game kind of weapon but it is more than capable of taking on main bosses and deleting them like I say with the base damage or the elemental damage over time. The other benefit of these two being combined is that you have access to endure which means that you can basically pass through most attacks to then also help you utilize the storm slash fable art with the steel cutter itself to deal a flurry of attacks again dealing thousands and thousands of damage in very quick succession. Again where we're going to be using quicker movesets with these particular builds I would highly recommend that you use the arm of god amulet if you can to again make use of the increased damage with successive attacks but otherwise it is just a rinse and repeat of the other amulets that we discussed earlier so the carriers amulet the extreme modification amulet and then either one of the three puppet destroyers destroyer puppets or carcass destroyers amulet the lesion arm that i would pair with all of this will have to be the flame burge Again, being one of the best scaling advanced legion arms, this is again going to do a lot of damage and burn enemies over time. And again, if you upgrade this particular legion arm, you will then have access to the explosive damage, knocking enemies back, normally overheating them, and just dealing again thousands of damage in very quick succession. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't like using flame weapons, you can also mix in electric heads, much like just keeping the circular electric chainsaw on it and just keeping that weapon as standard that's more than good enough but if you want an acidic weapon I would also heavily advise getting the acidic great curve sword as that is the best acidic head that you can put on any weapon and much like the black steel cutter will do a tremendous amount of damage and then of course just before we jump into the P organs the stats are again once the same as they were in technique and motivity but of course instead of putting it into technique or motivity we are putting the 30 points into advance but again if you're struggling with survivability for whatever reason pump more into health of course if for whatever reason you find yourself overcumbered a lot again pump more into capacity but realistically those stats will be your sort of like main guideline as to how the split should be with those particular points but what I will say as well with advanced weapons if you do find yourself in an abundance of ergo you can also utilize more points into both technique and motivity just to increase the base damage that you're going to be doing with the weapons advance will only really help you with the elemental damage that you do with the weapon but that is essentially all of the builds there for you i know there's some similarities especially with the amulets but again unfortunately with liza p there are just very select amulets that are good and ones that aren't really that great so feel free to obviously change the amulets to whatever playstyle you want if you need extra health or extra stamina regeneration if you feel that that's a definite must of course use those instead and again much like the amulets the p organs are going to be relatively the same in fact I would advise you getting all of the P organs in phase one as that will increase your fable slots, the amount of pulse cells that you have, whilst also giving you access to link dodge which is very very good at just dodging in general especially against fury attacks and then of course increasing the staggerable window for most enemies just again giving you more time to stagger your enemies and have more chance of getting those critical hits in and then obviously if you're looking forward especially into phase two i would advise mainly only getting the amulet slot and the increased pulse cell for now especially if you're in your first playthrough and don't worry about the retained guard regain as those two are also perks that you can get in like the sub upgrade within the defense category so if you are struggling with guard retain you can just use those instead in phase three again unless you're using summons I don't tend to usually but if you are using summons then maybe you can use the increased cube uses but I would heavily recommend just increasing again the pulse cell recovery and then for phase four I would recommend adding the second amulet slot perfect guard stiffness to again knock back your enemies whenever you hit a perfect guard and also increasing your fable slot once again so you've got five fable slots in total of course if you get any additional quartz and want to unlock all the other perks as well feel free to do so but those will be my sort of like main focuses for you guys if I had to sort of advise or recommend any those will definitely be my p organs of choice so yeah 
heavily focused on those as they will help you out with any of these builds that we've discussed. And that is pretty much everything for this video. I know it's going to be a little bit of a longer one, but for the sake of maybe adding an extra 5-10 minutes onto a normal video of ours, I felt it was better to do that and showcase all of the different builds, or at least showcase each stat and how you can get the best out of each stat, rather than making three separate videos essentially showing the same content, because you probably saw there, there's a lot of similarities in the builds, the only real things that are changing, obviously the weapons we're using, and realistically the legion arm, otherwise the stats are pretty much staying the same other than just the one that we're focusing on, so motivity, technique or advance are the only things that are changing. P organs are staying the same, amulets are somewhat staying the same, so it wasn't really worth regurgitating the same content three times over. Hopefully this video does give you a bit of guidance as to like how you can create a certain build at the beginning and then progress it throughout the game, picking up other items and of course showcasing the best items you can use for each one of those builds. Of course, let me know if you've enjoyed this type of content by leaving a like rating down below. It's the quickest and easiest way to let me know that you want to see more videos like this. Let me know if you're still playing Lies of P or if you're going through like a different playthrough or want to go through a different playthrough now using maybe a build or different types of weapons that you've never really used before and if you've got any other weapons that are just as good or even better than the one showcased here then again let us know in the comments down below what you're using as I'm sure many people will also be using the comments for help and guidance for other types of weapons as well and whilst you're down there you may as well hit the subscribe button as well I mean you're still here listening to my voice so if you want to stay up to date and make sure that you do not miss out on future content then make sure you hit that subscribe button it's free to do and guess what you can change your mind at any time so why not give it a go who knows you may even end up liking the rest of the content but yeah as i say that is pretty much everything from me guys so i hope you've enjoyed this video i hope you're having an amazing day and i guess for now i will catch you in the next video of whatever it is that we make bye bye